Hi guys, welcome to episode 14 of Dixon Drawing Class. <laughs> So wow, we are already on episode 14. That is crazy. We only have 10 more episodes and you're just gonna be a killer artist. You probably already are. Today, we're gonna be talking about part two of our three-part animal lecture series. We're gonna be going into more of the elements of the animals and how to practice those. And we have some kind of fun homework this week too. So let's get into our lecture. All right, pulled up here, as you can see, we have a side-by-side -side of a man kind of in a horse position and a horse in a man position. All right, now if you take a look, like I said, just like the chest and the hips are similar between humans and animals, the muscles are as well. So you can see that these are color-coded. I thought this illustration was awfully nice. Uh, shoulder muscles, shoulder muscles, you know, these biceps or triceps or whatever, biceps, as you can see they're color coded. This is actually really good practice and what you can even do is you can just trace over the muscles just to get a good idea and then draw them again on your own. All right, and you can find these by typing in animal muscles or horse muscles. Let's take a look at this. This is the hind leg of a cat. All right, you can see the tendons, the bones. This is also a very good exercise to study. Okay, you can see that there's lots of sinews here. It goes like this. Okay. And then you can draw it on your own. Etc. Okay, ooh, this is a good one. Check out these muscles. Now, as you're drawing, you can just pick one element of the horse to draw. This would probably take a long time to draw and get all the muscles, though I would encourage you to do that. But I would also encourage you to just focus on one aspect. So let's say I want to draw horse heads. Just focus on the horse head. Let me see how close that eye is. All right, focus on getting the muscles down. Okay, and you could spend a lot of time fleshing out that. Check out those muscles on the neck. Yeah, those are awesome. All right, you can work on the horse neck. You can work on the horse hooves. I know that that is something that a lot of students struggle with, is getting the hooves down. It might help to do the bone inside. It goes around the knuckle, it comes in, goes up like that. Okay, so stuff like that. All right, muscle of a cat head. Now, I just found all of these on Pinterest. You can find it by typing in or animal muscles. It's one of the things. Uh, and then, that's, that's one element you could draw is the muscles and the bones and things. Check out this, wings. Wings can be a struggle, right? So this would also be a good thing to practice. Remember we have the elbow here, the wrist here, and we have like the fingers here. All right, and just kind of break it down into shapes first and then do the individual feathers, okay? Because if you do the individual feathers first, you're gonna end up with wonky feathers and they won't have a consistent arc at the tips. So definitely 
you want to get the shapes out first. All right. It would also help to learn the names of the feathers, like the pin feathers and whatever these feathers are. Obviously, I've worked at knowing them. Ha 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 ha. But you know, it's useful to know anyway. All right, and then drawing them on their own. Okay, and then there's tons of pictures of birds with their wings folded, with birds with the wings, you know, down, up, all positions. So that's really good to study. Those are elements. Ooh, check out this gorilla face. All right, something like this would be very good to study. In fact, you could do the start out with a box, and that might make it easier. No. eyes. Okay, and you could spend forever, forever and a day drawing these elements because there are so many animals and there are so many parts of the animal that you could be kept busy for a good long time, which is good. There's lots of exciting things about animals, right? Another thing, pause would be a very good thing to study. Cat heads, anything. Just try and get a variety of animals in and work on their elements work on their muscles. In fact, what you could even do, we broke down animals into simple shapes last week. You could study their skull bones, right? And then you could work on drawing over the picture, their muscles and their bones and things. All right, so this would be muscles. things like that. Anyways, so there is a lot to work on this week, but our homework is going to be a lot of fun. And we'll talk about that at the end of class. But for now, we're going to get into drawing our animal. And our animal this week is a lot of fun. Our animal is Buckbeak. Yay! From Harry Potter. It's that, that hippogriff from Harry Potter. You're going to have lots of fun with this one. Let's begin. Okay, so here I have the sheet pulled up for us to look at, but you can also download it from my website. The link is included below. You can just follow along here. Okay, let's take a look at this sheet. What's the biggest circle? It's the chest. Da 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 da. All right, let's take a look. At how big it is on the page though. It's pretty small and the reason is Buckbeak has this great expanse of wings that make him f fly. So we have to save room for those. So as you draw your circle on your page, make sure that it is pretty small. It's more towards this corner. It's close to the center, but if it's anywhere it's leaning more bottom right. Okay. Don't draw the circle too big or else your wings will go straight off your page and you don't want that. In fact, I think I did draw this circle too big, so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's the ticket. big bird. Okay, once you feel like you've got that circle and it's reasonably round, let's go ahead and let's draw the head and the hips. Let's do the hips first. As you can see, they are, if we were to do this on a plane like this, the hips would be very close. It would be about this close, but they would be a little bit lower and they're not large at all. In fact, I'm doing them too big. So I would say they are about, it's about a third as big as this. So maybe this big. Yeah, that's 
Still too big. Whoa, this is tiny. Got a ton of hips. Okay, I feel more comfortable with that. All right, how do you feel like your butt beak bum is turning out? Let's do the head. So you can see the head is all the way up here. It's almost the same size as the hips. In fact, I used to say it's exactly the same size as the hips. So let's mark how far it is from here. It looks like it's pretty much diagonal here from our chest circle. So I would mark this. Okay, go ahead and kind of trace around your bum circle, your hip circle, and echo that circle right here. Okay, right now it looks like we have a disembodied Mickey Mouse head, huh? Let's connect it all with the spine. Let's just slope this line down from here. Okay, make it go to here like this. All right, and let's bring it around like this. Okay, not too bad. That's our buck beak body. You can go ahead and erase it where it goes just a little bit above the spine. Okay, I want to save the wings for last, so let's move on to the legs. Now, buck beak has unusual legs because the front ones are bird claws and the back ones are horse. Right, so it's going to be a little different for each. Let's start out with the front. Okay, and let's get those elbows down. This elbow's kind of straight, so we won't mark it. But this one in front, just this tiny little circle, just at the corner diagonal of, of that circle. Okay, so go ahead and draw that. Go ahead and do a line kind of coming into it to get that shoulder. And if you look, it pretty much goes straight out and down to about here, this line here. Maybe even a little bit further up, like this. Okay, and then it ends in a giant claw. And if you take a look at these circles that we have for the claws, you can see that his feet aren't actually that volume. It just follows the arc. So, so that's why we have circles there. These are pretty substantial circles. Let's see, it looks like they are about maybe half as big as this, so definitely bigger than the hips and the head. So go ahead and draw that. Looks like it's almost exactly underneath this circle. Go ahead and draw that. Okay, let's get this wrist circle down. It, they're very close together right here. And the reason is because it's foreshortened. All right, these will be further apart because they're not foreshortened, it's almost exactly straight. All right, looks like this leg comes out like this, almost straight out from the diagonal of the circle. Okay, if we take a look at where these circles are, it's the exact same size, it's a little bit further out, so go ahead and trace over this circle and then copy it right here. I would say it's about this close. Okay. Ooh. All right, let's between here and here is the wrist circle, so let's draw that. Let's connect it with a line. Okay. Time for the back legs. All right, these ones, it might just be good to start out with just a sloping line. And then parallel line kind of like this. All right, so that might help give us a guide. Looks like the hooves back here 
are about on the same plane as the bottom of this line. So I would just kind of mark that, just draw that. This hoof at the bottom of this one. Okay, so that might help us get started. Let's actually draw this rectangle. Check it out, this rectangle is pretty small. Definitely fit inside this bum or this hip circle. So go ahead and kind of just pencil it in and pencil it in down here. There we go, our rectangle right there. Okay. All right, this one is almost the exact same size as this one. It's just a little bit further up and a little bit smaller. So go ahead and draw that at the bottom of your line. Okay. Now almost halfway between each of these and the circle or and the belly there, we have the ankle, the ankle bones. So let's draw a circle. It looks like the circle is about as big as the circles that we had here. So you can kind of just lightly go over that. This one's a little bit higher. Okay. All right, so you have that marked out. Right now he's looking pretty goofy. Let's see, let's get the beak down and then we will move on to the wings. All right, check out the beak. I've marked it with a square or with a rectangle. It looks like the corner of the rectangle is right here. Let's bring it out like this. Pull it down. It looks like it's exactly straight up and down. That makes it a little bit easier rather than a tilted rectangle. Okay. All right, so this is our basic bug beak outline here. Let's move on to the wings. Woohoo, our most favorite part. Now check it out. The wings I've marked with a rectangle. It starts where? This rectangle starts where? The spine meets the circle right here. It ends kind of at the corner of this hip right here. So let's go ahead and draw those lines together. All right, and it goes pretty high up. So if we were to measure, let's see, between Buckbeak and the bot, but top of Buckbeak's head, bottom of Buckbeak's uh, claw, we did this. Hmm, it is. Blank. Let's measure that like this and like this. It would probably go to about here. Ooh. This is a long thing. It is a rectangle and it's tilted. Go ahead and connect those lines. Okay, kind of a thin rectangle. Make sure that we have 90 deg degrees on every corner here. And that the lines are parallel to each other. Okay. I'll take a look between here, 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 here. I think I might have drawn my rectangle just a little bit long. So I'm going to shorten it. Okay. Let's get kind of its arm down inside that rectangle now. Now take a look at this circle bigger than these joint circles. And look at how close it is to the edge of this circle. It's right here. It dips into this like that. Okay, we can go ahead, draw that line. Let's do the wrist joint here. It's about this high into the rectangle. It's about the same size as this. And it's just touching this top line. Let's draw the lines between there. Then let's get that down. All right, now that we know the basic shape, if you want to just lightly block the arc of these feathers down, see how it dips in like that. Okay, and then it dips in again, it goes up like that. this. Okay.
Okay, so that's wing number one. Let's do this back wing. Hey, this looks kind of easy. There's not too much to draw. It is uh, probably a little bit more difficult than that, but let's take a look at where the corner of this rectangle begins. It's about right here. Tilts down a little bit like this, so you can see it goes up through the head and beak, th that edge, and goes to about... If we measure this out, we definitely go, it goes to about here. All right, so it goes lower than this wing goes. Be sure to tilt it properly. Bring it in. Okay, go ahead and draw that rectangle. Really skinny rectangle. Okay, I hope that your bug beak fit on your page. You may have to start over again. That would be sad, but very good practice. Okay, now uh, this one's elbow joint is hidden by its beak, but we can get its wrist joint down. It is the exact same size as these ones. Check out how close it is to the head. It is about this close. All right, I must have a straight line going into it. Let's go ahead and just block out these feathers here. Interesting perspective, huh? Wings are flat, and so we're only seeing the side plane of this wing. It'll be interesting to flesh that out. Okay, let's let's uh, go into the legs again, and let's block them out. Let's first get this stomach down here. Connect the beak to the head. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. All right, so you can see the beak just arches down nicely from the head. I'm not sure we can see much of anything here. Okay, kind of goes around up like this. His eye, check out how close his eye to his beak is, right there. And we don't even see his other eye. It looks like there's some kind of markings here. We won't really worry about that. All right, let's move on to the legs. Just flush them out. See, so yeah, we have the straight, and then it goes around the joint here. And this one slopes down, and they go around and out, and then we have this. Okay, check out the negative space here. There's not a lot. So this back leg, pretty close to this front leg, or this, yeah, front leg, the leg behind, not a lot of negative space. We have the toe joint. Okay, let's move on to these claws. This is going to be fun. Now let's just lightly draw in this negative space. All right, sometimes it's easiest to draw foreshortened claws and fingers and stuff just by doing the oval. All right, and then we have the claws here. It kind of goes around like this. Circle for there. Okay, 
So that's one way to do it, to show them folded over so you see the front part of those claws. And it looks like that's what they've got here. We have the front part of this claw. Go ahead and draw that oval. We have this claw. And we have this claw. It's a little bit different. We're seeing more of the side of it. Get that shape down. Ooh, it has substantial claws. Buck Peak is a dangerous creature. All right, I'm just going to lightly erase this. As you can see, we have the shoulder and it dips into here. Like this. Go ahead and draw the lines around there. This is a little tricky to see. When we clean it up, you'll see it much better. Okay, let's move on to the next leg. This one's easy. We have to do top leg. The top arm goes into that. Transitions to a claw there. As you can see, this claw goes a little bit over. This one arches around. Okay. This back one curves like that. This is a pretty complex shape. And we could spend a whole lot of time working on just the claws. But that's something that might be good for you to work with on your own. Just to really study the drawing sheet. Spend some time getting those shapes down. Okay, let's actually fix that. This goes around like this. This kind of goes like that. All right, I'll probably do that a little bit too big, but let's move on to the wings anyway. All right, we've blocked this out. Let's actually start getting this arm section down, this top of the wing section down. So you can see it kind of has a hard substantial part at the top and then it grows into wings. So we have smaller wings here. I think they're called pin feathers. All right, and then we have these wings here. And like I said, wings are a lot like hair. So you need to break it down into simple shapes and then fill out the details. So that's what I would recommend for you to do here, is fill out the shapes and then get the details in. Okay, we will spend more time on that. Let's get this bone down and then we'll clean up our drawing. Okay, because this is flat, we're basically seeing the, the top of the wing. And for this motion, you can see the feathers. The wind is like, it's blowing the feathers back. So you see a little bit of those. We see a little bit of the front rings, just a fringe. The wings kind of go around its beak there, as you can see. Okay, this is our basic outline. Whoa, this is tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flesh it out, and you'll need some time to flesh it out, too. So let's begin. Oh, the Danube is green as the grass, and the spring is as green as the dollar you spend on. The fling is as green as the paint that you put on. The spring of the blue of the Danube is greener than green. The Danube is a blue. Oh, the Danube has another hue. It's time we all came green. Be all. The Danube is a blue. Ta-da! We did it!
Nice, how did yours turn out? This one is a really difficult one, so if you're not happy with it, you can go ahead and do it again. Okay, guess what time it is. It's time for a question and answer. Ah! Okay, so this question was left on my YouTube channel page, and uh, it's from Badger, and it says, Hi there, I have a question. Whenever I start to draw, I always freeze up and I don't know where to begin. Do you have any suggestions on how to loosen up before I draw so my art doesn't suffer? That's actually a really good question. Uh, I think the main thing you need to ask yourself is why are you freezing up? And I'm guessing it's because like a lot of artists, you're probably a perfectionist and you just want it to be perfect. And not only that, but you probably have some nice paper that you don't want to mess up. And uh, so so you're nervous about, about destroying your drawing. So, uh, I can give you three tips on how to overcome this and the first one is you need to not expect yourself to be perfect. Drawing is a really messy process and I go through a lot of pages and a lot of iterations before I get to the perfect drawing. So you have to be okay with uh, you know making mistakes and redrawing and drawing again and uh, and scrapping the whole thing and starting all over. That's okay. It's okay. It's totally okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would recommend is that before you draw, you should warm up. And a lot of times I use my practice time for drawing as my warm up time. But uh, if you don't have time for that, what you can do is just practice drawing uh, a little bit, maybe 15 minutes or something before you start to draw. And actually, that really helps a lot warming up before you get to the real stuff. So I would recommend definitely warming up, whether it's your practice time or just to kind of, uh, you know, oil the gears before you get started. Um, drawing, drawing things similar, similar styles and stuff to what you're about to draw. Uh, the third tip I have to help you overcome this is to draw things over and over and over. And what I mean by that is a lot of times what you do is you draw a character and you're like, I'm really not happy with his chin. I'm really not happy with his shoulder. I'm not happy with how his hands are turning out. This is okay. Keep on drawing. Get it as perfect as you can at that stage. All right. Then put a piece of paper over it and trace it again. Make sure you've got the parts that you like. Work on the parts that are a little bit rougher. And you'll find that maybe in this time around, his chin's a little bit better. His hand's a little bit better. All right. And so then you scrap the piece of paper that you had under there, you have this new drawing, then you trace it again, okay? And you have, by now, his shoulder's great, his chin is great, his hands probably still need some work, uh, but you're tracing and you're, you're slowly improving it on each round. Okay, so don't be afraid to go through lots of paper, don't be afraid to trace. A lot of artists have to go over, including me, a lot of artists have to go over and over and over sketching and one sketch before they're happy with what they have. So, whew, hope that helps. So don't, don't expect yourself to be perfect. Uh, the best artists take a long time to get to what they need. And so, yeah, just attack it with a vengeance. Be sure to warm up and practice drawing over and over. I hope that helps. Let's talk about our homework, guys. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so our homework is... Not only do I want you to work on practice drawing the elements of animals, like their paws and their faces and stuff, but this one involves a field trip. We want you to practice drawing animals from life. And what I mean by that is I want you to go to your friend's house and draw their cat or go to a farm and draw the horses there or go to the zoo. Maybe you can convince your parents to take you to the zoo and you can take some time drawing the animals there, breaking them up into simple shapes like I taught you and uh, working on the elements of their faces or their legs or whatever you need to do. Sounds like fun, huh? That's because it will be fun. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you again for spending your time with me. Very excited to see you again next week. Bye-bye.